gospel this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn with me over there to Luke chapter number 24. And uh, you can tell what the message is going to be this morning. I, I um, want to talk to you about not leaving home without your coat. How many of you know, you remember when you was a kid, you were going to leave the house and go outside and play and be cold outside. Mom said, boy, don't forget to get your coat on. Y'all remember that? How many of y'all? How many of y'all remember that? I had some cousins. It'd be snow and ice on the ground. Their mom and dad'd be off working. They'd be out in the yard running around barefooted as a goose with no shirt on and cut off pants. That's no joke. But you know what? They were never sick. They were never sick. The rest of us run around with allergies and sinuses, and we'd be running and dripping and blowing our noses and all kinds of things, and they'd just be running around like heathens. Amen. And they never, they never got sick. Eh? <laughs> uh, but be that as it may, um, uh, we know what it means not to leave home in the cold weather without your coat. In Luke chapter 24, verse number 49, Jesus doing the talking, he said, Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power uh, from on high. Would somebody say amen to that? It's the last thing he told them before he ascended back into the heavens. And it's almost as though he was letting them know that this is a cold and wicked old world that I'm leaving you in. And you don't need to leave home without your coat. Amen. I'm leaving you, but I'm going to pray the Father. He's going to send another comforter back to you. And you don't need to do anything until you hear from him. Would somebody shout a good amen to that? I was thinking the other day about what I wanted to say and how I want to approach this because we all know that we had different hopes and aspirations about the elections and all. There's a, as Sister Jeannie said, there's all kinds of stuff, and I'm like her. I, don't, I hadn't watched the news now in several days. My wife wanted to turn over there last night and watch the weather. I told her, I said, honey, it's going to do the same thing tomorrow that it did today. I said, I don't, I'm going to watch gun smoke. I don't want to watch it. I, I mean, I just, you know what I'm saying, I just... I, I, re, I, I prefer to watch Matt Dillon. She was, she was trying to read to me somebody's post about what this polit po political analysis is saying. I said, baby, please don't read me nothing. Don't send me nothing. I don't want nothing. I don't care. I, I just don't care. Amen. I, that's, that's just where I'm at. I don't mean to be ugly, but I'm so tired of the rat race. I've said this to you hundreds of times. I repeat it today. They're all crooks. It don't make no difference what stripe they are. Some of them just worse crooks than others. Amen. That's just the way it is. The ones that ain't crooks ain't got the courage to stand up to those that are crooks. And so until they grow a backbone, then they ain't going to be no help. So there you go. I don't want to watch it. I don't want to hear it. Somebody say amen. I just want to stay locked and loaded. Somebody shout a good amen right there. <laughs> now, I've got to be careful because that can be considered hate speech, but I, I, I really do mean that. But I want to tell you, it's a wicked old world. And another way that we can say it, it's cold outside. Would you say amen? I love that Christmas song, Baby, It's Cold Outside. Y'all remember that? Huh? I'm not trying to go back to Christmas time. Don't misunderstand me, but I, I'll tell you, it's a cold old world outside. Uh, would you shout a good amen to that? And so I thought in the, in the case of all of this, because we've been told this and that and the other, and, and we were in hopes that it was gonna, this was going to happen and that was going to happen and, and all of this, that, and the other was going to take place. And we've had our hopes hanging on, on presidents and on this party versus that party. On, and I believe God would have us understand you've got your hope in the wrong place. Amen. It don't make no difference. You know, no matter how cold the world is outside, he said, I've got what you need to get through. And I said, now, Father, what could I go this morning and say to the church that's going to minister to them, encourage them, as well as give direction for them in the hour that we're living in right now? And I believe that uh, the Lord just dropped this into my heart. I believe that because this last thing he told the disciples. And when you think about the disciples and the shape that they were in, they had been around Jesus for three and a half years. He had been everything to them. They had eaten with him. They had traveled with him. They had slept in the same room with him. They had did ministry with him. They seen miracle after miracle after miracle. They had seen him pray. They had seen him go through hard times. They had seen him through difficult times. Somebody say amen to that. And so here we are as, as we're coming to the end of all the situations. 
situation. Their life has been turned upside down. And Jesus says to them, he said, I, won't, I don't want you to worry about it. It's a cold world out there. And don't you leave home without your coat. Would you say a good amen to that? I want us to look this morning just real quickly and real briefly about, about this scripture. And I want to tell you that these are troubled times that we're in as well. I, I, I mean, I've been saying that for, oh, Lord. I started the ministry in 1984, and it was troubled times then. It's gotten worse over the years. Uh, I, I've watched as the church has just been uh, uh, playing games, and it, it's kind of like the hula hoop. You know, they uh, this group has got this, and I've seen the laughing thing come and go, and I've seen the hula hoop. I've seen the crack cackling like chickens and, and, and uh, howling like dogs, and I, I've seen that stuff come and go like the hula hoop, amen. But how many of you know that the Word of God stands forever? Would you shout a good amen to that? He never changed what his instruction is he said I want you to stay steady Can somebody say amen I want you to stay focused is what we were told uh, amen at the first of the week stay focused on what God would have us to be doing would you shout a good amen to that I, I want to take just a moment because I know y'all don't read this all the time and just bear with me just for a moment but on the pastor's corner I haven't put anything new on there all month probably go the rest of this month because of the first service of this week this year we had a prophecy come through in uh, from one of the sisters in our church and this is what he said if you got your bulletins look on the back page and this is what he said arise and take your position for now is the hour for I am coming soon would you say amen if you're going to do anything, you need to be doing it now. Amen. If you're going to pray, pray now. If you're going to work, work now. Get in your position now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And he said, look not to the right or to the left, but stand upon my word and see the manifestation of my power, for I have empowered you. Mm, my, 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 my. Somebody needs to hear this this morning, this, ladies and gentlemen. Draw from the well that is within you and stand upon my word. For I am the I am, and soon and very soon I shall return. And I'm returning for my church, for my bride, without spot or without wrinkle. Hallelujah. And then they end with this. Stay focused. Stay focused. Stay focused. Hallelujah to God. I believe that we can do that, ladies and gentlemen. I believe that we must do that. It's not time to get loose around the edges. Would you shout a good amen to that? It's not time to give up throwing the towel. It's not time for that. It's time to go and draw something from the well. Would you say amen to that? If you're thirsty, ladies and gentlemen, draw water from the well. He said, I've sent that well for you to draw from. Amen. From week to week, would you shout a good amen to that? People are scared in our generation, ladies and gentlemen. The media has done a fine job of putting fear in our nation today. I heard a prophecy yesterday, and I, I believe some of what he said, probably all of it, but I don't remember all of it today, but he made this statement. He said, because the devil has tried to muzzle the church, amen, by wearing masks and separate my body, he said, I'm going to separate demon powers, and he said, I'm going to muzzle the mouth of the devil. Somebody said, Say amen. He said, I'm going to bring you together again as the body of Christ and the glory of God is going to be found in the midst of you once again. Can somebody say a good amen, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, hallelujah. There's troubled times then. There's troubled times now. Meanwhile, the churches in most, in most cases have become quiet and impotent to offer any kind of answers to a world that's hurting and dying, have become more actors than anything else. And we put on a good front. We can appear to be a successful Christian in the eyes of the world. We pretend to have victory that we don't have. We pretend to, have, to be happy when we're not happy. Amen. We, we act like Christians. Christians, we, uh, we do the things that Christians say they should do, but on the inside, we've lost our zeal and there's no fire. And God said, you got to draw from the well on a regular basis so that you have that which is necessary to feed a hungry and a lost and dying world. 
the things of God are all brought about by the Spirit of the Lord. Would you say a good amen to that? Amen. We got to realize that we can't start in the Spirit and end in the flesh. Hallelujah. I like what one old preacher said. He made the statement. He said, man, I was born in the fire. And he said, the smoke just won't do. Would you say amen to that? <laughs> amen. Somebody said, Pastor, I'm tired of the smoke. Would you say amen to that? I want to get close enough to the fire to see if it's going to burn me or not. Amen. I want to walk in the pit and know that God's going to be there when I get there. I want to show up, ladies and gentlemen, on the side of the master so that God can get glory out of my life. No matter what I'm faced with in my life, no matter what I'm going through, no matter what the world says or the Supreme Court says or anybody else says, and it don't even matter who sits in the White House. I've said this for years. I say it now. I believe it now as much as I've ever believed it. Everything that we're going through in this world today is for one reason, and that's to get a bride ready for the coming of the Savior. Everything is to get us ready for the coming of the Savior. No matter what you're going through, no matter how discouraged you are, no matter how distraught you are, I just encourage you to drink from the well this morning. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Let's understand this is troubled times, but God has said, I have given you the answer. Ooh, somebody shout a good amen. I talked about troubled times long enough, but... How many of you know the answer is in the promise? The answer is in the promise. I believe this is a message for this hour, Brother Kenny. I, I really do. Hey, amen. I believe it's the answer. If it worked on the, on the day of Pentecost, if it worked for the first century church, it'll work on the last century church. Would you say amen to that? Yes, if it started out there, ladies and gentlemen, it'll bring us through to the other side. That old Christian song, if it's good for Paul and Silas, it's good for me and you. Somebody shout amen to that. May God fill us with the Holy Ghost and fire. And may the power of God scorch through our veins again. That we stand upright when the world that don't understand us looks at us and say, I know there's something different about that person. And that difference is God is on their side. Jesus said, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Isaiah 44 and verse number 3 said, I will pour out water upon him that is thirsty. Can I just be so bold today to tell you, old Kenneth just hadn't been thirsty enough? Come on now. I'm just being honest with you. I'm not pointing the finger at you. I got three. I'm pointing right back my way when I do. Somebody say amen to that. We're not thirsty enough. Amen. We're in too big a hurry to get out here and beat the Baptist to church or to McDonald's on Sunday morning to let God move. We're so worried about the pot roast that we put in the oven. Can I tell you, I pray there comes a time when you go to put the roast on in the oven, instead of putting it on 350, you drop it back to 250 because you know you're going to be here longer than what you anticipated. You was going to be here, and it'd be just as good when you get there as it would if you cooked it at a higher rate of speed. My God, let us get as hungry for him as we are for the natural things. Now y'all know that it's been how long has it been? I'm so weak I can't only stand up. But uh, we, we ain't had no meat around my house. I never thought I'd get tired of fish, but I'm tired of fish. Huh? Man, I could eat a, I could eat a rib eye as big as my head, half as thick. Would you shout a good amen to that? Whoo! You say, Pastor, what, what are we gonna do? Well, it did. I think I put it in the bulletin, but I didn't make mention of it. The thirty-first, the the fast ends on the thirtieth, and the thirty-first we're gonna feast. A couple of us are. The rest of y'all can join in if you want to. Blessed be His holy name. How many of you had trouble because you've been giving up some stuff and sacrificing? Let me see your hand. How many of you know the traveler is going to come ringing your doorbell when you try to press in and get closer to God? Yes, he is. 
Yes, he is. Hallelujah. But he said, I'm going to send waters upon him that is thirsty is what he said. Floods upon the dry ground and I'll pour my spirit upon thy seed and thy, my blessings upon thine offspring. I like the easy to read version of that verse and this is the way it reads it. I will pour water for, uh, for thirsty people and streams will flow through the desert. Somebody say amen. I will pour my spirit on your children. I will bless your family. I will bless your family. Somebody say amen. My family needs blessed. My children need to be blessed. My children need to be filled. Somebody hear me this morning. God's promise said I'm going to pour my spirit out. I'm going to empty out the windows of heaven. My God, I wish Brother Doug was here this morning talking about the open windows of heaven. And he said, come and drink that you may be slated your thirst at the wells of God. John chapter 14, verses 16 and 17, still talking about the promise. I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Somebody say amen. You mean, Pastor, he abides with me forever, even in COVID? Yes, even in COVID. You, e even in lockdown? Yes, in lockdown. Even in sickness and disease? Even in death, Pastor? Yes, yes, yes. He said, I will never, never leave you nor forsake you. Hallelujah. And we can take it to the bank, ladies and gentlemen. Even the spirit of truth, he said, when the world cannot receive, whom the world cannot receive, because it sees him not, neither knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you, and he shall be in you. Somebody shout a good amen. You know what he's saying? He's saying, church, he said he's been with you all this time, but he said, that's not going to be sufficient for the cold weather outside. Amen. Things is getting rough out there. He said, you're going to have him not only with you, but he's going to be in you. Somebody say amen. I like it where he said to the disciples, said, take no thought before him what you're going to answer when you stand before your enemies, for that which shall be given to you will be given to you of the Holy Ghost. Somebody uh, say a good amen. You know what that says to me? He said, Kenneth, he said, in the presence of your enemies, I'm going to prepare a table in the presence of your enemy somebody say amen you want to have a testimony you got to have a test hallelujah you want to have a table spread before you you got to go to the wilderness you want to have your enemy stand at all ladies and gentlemen you're going to have to understand that he's not just with us but he's in us hallelujah mm -mm. Lord have mercy. Joel chapter number 2, verses 28 and 29, he said, I, It shall come to pass afterward, somebody say afterward, and I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Your old men shall dream dreams. Hallelujah. Brother Richard, I'm moving on over closer to that dreamland. Say amen right there. I still want to prophesy, but I'm moving over closer to that dreamland. Would somebody say amen? That's all right. It don't make any difference. Prophesy or dream dreams. It don't make no difference. Does somebody say, I want God to gift me. I want God to use me in the body of Christ so that somebody can be edified. He said, your old men, your young men shall see visions also upon your servants and your handmaidens in those days will I pour out of my spirit. Jesus lays the foundation here, ladies and gentlemen, for what he's about to do. Somebody say, get ready. Get ready. Woo, somebody say, get ready. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't never, I've never claimed to be anything. I, I'm just who I am, and I'm rough around the edges, and I, I don't look real pretty in a suit. I understand all that. I got that. I'm not here for no makeup contest, ladies and gentlemen, but I believe I'm on assignment from the Most High God. I don't know what God is up to, but I believe He's up to something. I believe there are souls out there that are assigned to this church. I believe our Hispanic family is going to grow. 
I believe that God is going to bless that church. And if God blesses their church, he's going to bless our church. Would you say amen? Because our church is their church. And their church is our church. Hallelujah. And we come together as one body under one head and one blood. Would you say a good amen to that? Man, I feel better all over than anywhere else. I don't know how y'all feel. I said he's getting ready. He's getting ready to do something. I can't explain it. Explain it. I can't explain it, nor can I explain it. Say amen to that. I don't know, but I've been told, hallelujah, stay focused, stay focused, Stay focused. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember the promise. My promises are a and the amen in him. Somebody say a good amen to that. Hallelujah. I don't know what they're going to do, and I'm not concerned about it. I know one thing President Biden's sign has reversed a lot of things that was working. He signed a lot of things that ain't going to work. But you know what? I don't care. In one swipe of the pen, he cost 60,000 people their jobs and never even batted an eye about it. But I'm here this morning to tell you there's more on the line than that. God is getting ready to do something in our nation. God is getting ready to manifest his glory and his power in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been muzzled long enough and the power of God is about to sweep through this place like we never had it to happen before. Now, he said, tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. That word comes from a word that means to seat down, to sit down. It means Set. Sit down. Settle down. Uh huh. Uh, what did he say to Moses? Be still, Moses, and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. My, my, my. Y'all know there's so many Jewish folks going home from around the world, going back to their native Israel today that they're calling it the second exodus. Somebody say amen, except for an exodus from Israel. They are having an exodus to Israel. Would you shout a good man? They had to stop them from going into the into home. There were so many of them coming home, they couldn't even process them fast enough. This too shall come to pass, ladies and gentlemen. My people are going to be gathered back in their homeland. It doesn't make any difference what Russia does or God does or Magog does or none of the rest of those nations. I'm here to tell you, they're not ever going to leave there again for God is going to stand up on their side. God is about to do a great thing, ladies and gentlemen, in our world today. He said, I don't want you to go preaching. I don't want you to go start no church. I want you to sit still and be quiet until the promise comes. My problem is I don't tarry like I need to. We get in a hurry. You ever notice we give an altar call in the church and if anybody responds by the time they have made it to the altar from the front of the church and those that's coming from the back, by the time the ones in the back get up here, the ones in the front have already prayed and gone back to their seat. God, I'm on the run here. Bless me on the run. Holy Ghost said, son, sit down, Terry. Sit down, Terry. Sit down, wait, 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 wait. Grandpa said, wait, broke the wagon down. Pastor, wait. Broke the wagon down. Listen to me, church. I know, I know what this means, and I know the theology of all of that, but I'm just here to tell you that the modern day church is going to have to learn to wait on the Lord. Would you say amen to that? Learn to tarry in his presence and not be in any hurry. 
of the third thing that I want to share with you is this. If we're going to be a witness, then we've got to be endued with power. The spirit from on high is a spirit of power, spirit of might, it's a spirit of knowledge and of understanding, of comfort and consolation. When those men were filled with the Holy Ghost, they were no more fearful and they were no more timid. They in the world looked at them and said, these men that have turned the world upside down have now come to our city. My oh God. Because they tarried. You know, we preach this stuff so much, and we've talked about it so much to folks in Pentecostalism just sit there and just look like I've heard this all before, Pastor. But ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you something. God is about to shake our world. Mm, God is about to shake our world. Would you say amen to that? May God start in Lake Hamilton Assembly of God Church. May he start in this pulpit. Somebody say a good amen to that. May God radiate and permeate from here out so that we can be endued with power that comes from another world. Now, Sister Pack, I want you to help me here. Come up here. Sister Becky. Hang on a second. Hang on one second. I'm talking about don't leave home without your coat. <clears throat> we in the church, <clears throat> we make everything so hard. But I'm going to show you by this little illustration what it means to be endued. Now, that word endued, here's what it means. It means in a sense of sinking into a garment, to invest with clothing, to array, to clothe, to put on, to endue. Now, Sister Pack, I, I don't want you to stand there like a store, a store salesman. Sister Becky, I don't want you to stand there cold. I want you to be looking forward to this warmth that's about to come on you. Now this 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 I know that you, I know what you're thinking, Pastor. That coat is going to be entirely too big, but I got something to say about that too. Now I, I want I want you, Sister Becky. I want you to be clothed with that coat. Would you say Amen to that? Right now, show them, Sister Pack. Amen. Now, isn't that isn't that pretty? Amen. Now you just wrap it around. You kind of hold it there, real close and real tight. And Amen. That. Mm, that's that's what it means to be clothed upon, ladies and gentlemen. That that's what it means to be endued with power from on high. Somebody say, "Amen." Mm, somebody said, "Pastor, that that's too big for her." Yes, it's too big for all of us. Would you say, "Amen" to that? It's bigger than I am. It's bigger than you are. Hallelujah! It's more power than it's necessary. That coat's going to keep her warm because it's too big for her. It's going to give her strength because it's too big for her. It's going to give her peace because it's too big for her. Somebody say, "Amen." My God, have mercy. Woo, woo, hallelujah. What, what do you have need of this morning? You say, Pastor, I need a healing in my body. It's too big for you. Amen. It, it, it's too big. It's too much for you. Somebody say, you say, I need, I need strength in my body. It's more strength than you have need of. Glory to God. I'm telling you here this morning, ladies and gentlemen, God said, if you just be clothed upon, 
Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, for lay, yea, I am the Lord, and I am in your midst this morning. For truly this morning I have come with more than what you have need of. Whatever your need is this morning, I encourage, I employ you to be clothed upon with my Holy Spirit and with my power and with my glory. For yea, I have come to give you that which is able to see you through to the end of your race. I am soon to return and take you unto myself. So therefore lift up your heads that hang down and your knees that are weak. Let them be strengthened. For I, the Lord your God, have declared it so. In Jesus' name. Amen.